Welcome back to East Coast Wagering. Today I'm gonna to cover the Saratoga card for Thursday, July 21st. And if you like two-year-old races and first-time starters, you're gonna be very excited about this card. There's four maiden races, three of which are specifically geared towards two-year-olds. And throughout the card, in those four maiden races, we have 16 horses that have never run before. The race of the day is in race nine, it's the Rick Violet Stakes. And much like the Wednesday card, some of these fields have come up on the light side, but let's take a look at the selections. <laughs> As I mentioned, the race of the day is race nine. It's the Rick Violet Stakes. It's for New York fouled three-year-olds going a mile and a 16th on the inner turf. And in this race, my top selection is the number four Dakota Gold. And I think he's going to be very tough to beat here. He won last out in the New York Stallion Stakes by tracking the leader and gradually wearing that one down in the stretch. That win was off a seven month layoff and was only at seven furlongs while this race is at a mile and a 16th. It looks like he will benefit with the increased distance and should also move forward second off the layoff. There also appears to be enough pace to set him up well. The only knock is that you're going to have to take a very short price on this one. If you wanna try and beat him, the number three coinage is the most logical horse and I will toss in the number seven practice squad as my third pick. My best bet of the day is in race five. It's a six furlong, $12,500 claiming event. And in this race, the number four horse, Greatest Love, looks like she's going to be a massive favorite, but it looks like she's probably the best in this group. She finished second in a $25,000 claimer last out at this six furlong distance. She broke alertly, but settled off the pace in fourth of six. Turning for home, she made a move, but couldn't make up any ground in the stretch. She has been very close a couple times at that level, but drops in class off the most recent claim. It is a promising sign to see Rosario back on board, and the trainer does run them well off the claim. I'll include the seven guns blazing as my second choice, and the number two Aiden Nike as my third. Additionally, the forecast calls for some rain on Thursday, and if the track does come up a little wet, I'll move the number five Domineer up in my exotics as well. As I mentioned with the previous day, with these small fields, finding value is a bit difficult. In race one, we only have six horses, but I think the number three Insomniac at eight to one morning line could get into the mix with the top three morning line choices. Pletcher also has the six in here as the morning line favorite, but he is very successful at having horses ready to run in their first lifetime races. So I'll include the number three as well. Race number six, we have eight entered, half of which are first time starters. I think the number eight Jeremy's Jet has value at eight to one. He has run four times with two nice efforts and two poor efforts. Both of the better efforts were at four and a half furlongs, while the bad ones were at five furlongs. One would assume he wants to go shorter, so the five and a half will not be a better spot, but in both five furlong races, he didn't get a clean start. At eight to one, I'll take the chance that's the reason he didn't perform as well, and not the distance, and I'll try to get him into my exotics. The race I think has the best potential for value is race number 10, which is a turf sprint for two-year-olds. The three top morning line choices are all first time starters, but I think the number one tell me when and number three factor that merit consideration off their first lifetime starts. Both finished second by around a length and both showed a little bit of early foot with the number three showing a bit more. The one ran on dirt and the three on synthetic and they both jump in class, but in a two year old race, I will typically lean toward horses with experience if they have shown a good effort. And here are the rest of my selections for the Thursday, July 21st card. So those are my selections for Thursday, July 21st. And as I mentioned on the Wednesday card, it's difficult to find much value in these short fields, especially with these big favorites that look like they're probably the likely winners. I think if I invest anything in this card, it's probably gonna be possibly in the pick fives. I'll single those horses that I like at short prices and maybe try to go a little deeper in the maiden races, trying to catch a price. This is Jeremy Peelmeyer for East Coast Wagering. Thanks again for watching my video and I'll see you again soon.